Hi guys, Mark here with Walters World, and we're on the campus of the University of Illinois. You can see the lovely students walking by. Some of them actually might be my students, so if I even wave at you, that's hopefully what it is. If they do anything worse, of course they're not my students, because my students are the best. Remember that, guys. Anyway, what we're going to talk about today is the diffusion of infra uh, sorry, the diffusion of innovation. Basically, how fast or how quickly a new product or new innovation kind of becomes accepted and you know ad adopted throughout the market. Okay, basically looking at how people will buy their products, when they buy their products, what their feelings are, these kind of things. And you can kind of divide it up when a new product comes out. And by doing that, you have a better idea of how you can market to these people, what are the things you need to stress, what are the benefits that are going to be more important to talk about, these kind of things. And it's kind of helpful for marketers because we can have an idea. If we see we come out with a new product, we can roughly gauge how fast it will become adopted and then we'll know if it is taking off or it's not taking off. Because that's one of the big problems you have with new product development is, hey, when do we, we say it was a failure or we say it is a success, okay? Now, when you look at this, you divide up the market into five distinct groups. You have innovators, you have early adopters, you have the early majority, the late majority, and laggards. Each one of these different segments, they have different purchasing habits and different things that they're looking for. If you look at innovators, these are the first couple percent of people that are buying the product. Usually they're the ones that are most educated about the product. They're the you know the Mac fanboys that are sitting outside for the new iPhone 6 that are like, oh, oh, is it here? Is it here? It's going to have this. It's going to have this. They know everything beforehand and so they're very gung-ho for it. Now, for marketers, these people are very important to get because they're the first ones that are going to be promoting your product. They're going to say it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, all these things. Okay, so it's very nice. And when it does come out, we know these people are actually, you know, they want to have the product, they're going to go for it, they're having more money to spend on it because they're willing to pay more for it. So obviously you're going to have a higher cost, a higher price when it first comes out, okay? If you see anything, the initial, product, the initial price is always the highest and over time it goes down, 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 okay? Now, the second one is actually the, the what are called early adopters, like, you know, 10, next 10 to 15 percent of the market that's out there. These people are important because they form the opinions. It's kind of like if, uh, you know, tablets come out, do you ask the Mac fanboy what the best tablet is? No, because they're so, like, I love Apple, I love Apple, that you don't really trust them. But the people that look and see, do a little bit of research beforehand, wait to see the first reviews, they're the early adopters and you're going to trust their opinion because they did more research. They weren't the first in line, but they waited to see how the first users, how it went, and then they made their decision, okay? Now, with these, I mean, a good example would be, you know, they maybe go see a movie on Saturday. When a movie comes out, they come out on Friday. They're not going to wait in line. They're going to wait for the first reviews. When the first reviews come and say it's a good movie, then they'll go, all right? Then you have what's called the early majority. This is the, you know, a third of the market here, and here the product has now become perfect. They've waited to make sure all the bugs are out, so if you're looking at a Microsoft Office or, or, or Windows kind of thing, these are the ones where they wait until after the first one's going to come out, because no one buys it the first time the first day it comes out, because there's always going to be bugs, there needs to be more things. They wait for the security patch to come in, and then they know it's time that, hey, you know what, we can actually buy it, okay? So that's there. Now, what's good here is this is when a product usually becomes profitable, and if it becomes profitable, guess what, here's some bad news. In that early, the early majority phase, now you're going to start having the competition coming in. You have the most competition in this, in this part, okay? Now, the, after you have the early early majority, you have the late majority. These people, they're actually, they're still people are still buying the product. You know, people still buy their Windows 7, though Windows 8 is already out and these other things. So there are people still adopting it. It's just taking a lot more time. They've waited and waited and waited. Maybe they put it off because they didn't want to spend the money. Now they're finally doing it because they have to because their operating system won't work unless it's a Windows 7. Um, if you look at it from a you know, kind of a movie perspective. These are the people that watch the movies on Netflix. They don't go in the theater to spend the most money and they don't go to rent it at Redbox and spend extra cash. They wait for it till it's on their, you know, monthly subscription to Netflix, okay? And then you want to have what are called laggards, okay? These are people that may never adopt the product, may never go for this innovation, or if they do, it's only in a passive way. So if we go back to a movie example, they're not going to go to the theater to watch it. They're not going to rent the DVD. They're not going to get Netflix to watch it. But if it's on NBC, you know, the random public channel, they might stop and watch it, you know, with the commercial and all these kind of things, all right? Now, if you look at all these things, what's the point? Why, why do we want to know all these things? Why do we want to have all these things? Because, guys, you have to tailor your marketing and your advertising for each of these markets. So you may ask yourself, Mark, what's the big deal? Why do I need to know all these different groups, this timeline of people and segments that are going to buy my products? Well, the thing is, you have to realize that you're going to be selling your product over a long time, years, decades maybe, 
And what you look at is like, hey, I have to know how do I market to each one of these segments? Because it will be different. Because trying to sell a DVD to somebody is different than trying to get them to go out and spend eight bucks for the 3D version of, you know, The Hobbit or whatever. Okay, so you're going to be tailoring it to a different way. Now, what can we do to kind of help our innovation or how can we judge if our innovation is going to be adopted faster or quicker than other innovations? Well, one thing you look at is you look at the relative advantage of your product. If it's, you know, if your advantage of your pro the new innovation is out there, you can really see it, you know, you're going to have a better luck to be adopted. That's why when the DVDs came out, they had they would show the split screen. This is watching movie on a DVD. This is watching on a VHS tape. And you could see the clarity. It was really easy to see. So that relative advantage, the easier it is to see, boom, I can see the advantage. You're going to have a much more success, okay? Another thing you have to look at is, is the innovation compatible, the compatibility of this innovation. Is it something that will work? You know, because if it's, we have this innovation of new, the best snow tires ever. Well, you know what? We don't have any snow. So that innovation probably is not going to take off in Georgia where there's no snow. So you have to look at it this way. Will it fit into the market? Is it compatible with the market we're going to? Another thing you want to look at is if you can observe the innovation, if it's something you can see, you know, and that goes into back to that DVD, VHS thing, I can observe the difference between the two so it makes it a lot easier for people to understand it because they can see it. They can observe the differences out there, they're more accepted to get it. That's why we have these P90X videos, they show you the before and after, well, I can observe, I can see the difference. So it makes it for the innovation to be adopted more quickly. And then you look at complexity and trialability. If the more complex the product is, the innovation is, the harder it's going to be for people to accept it, okay? Because if you have to, if it takes an hour to explain how this product's going to change your life, people won't get it. But if you can say it in 10 seconds, hey, it's going to change your life because you lose 50 pounds. I can understand that. Okay, simple to understand. Also, if it's easy to trial, people can, you know, just go and, and try it out. That's going to help people advise, you know, do it. That's why if you go to a Sam's Club or you go someplace, they have those you know, free samples of our new products because they know if you can try the meatballs and you taste them and they're good, you'll buy them. So that's why they hey, just try it. They're very trial. It's a trial size. Kink, kink. There you go. Okay, so these four things will really influence how fast the innovations will be accepted or and it gives a marketer an idea of what we're going to need to do. What should we try to sell our product on? Because if there's a, you know, a really easy relative advantage to, to talk about, we can show that. If there's something we can, you know, and those things we show, if it's easy to see, we do that. If we know that, you know what, people are not going to be able to understand our product, they need to try it out, then you know what, we go to all the retail outlets and we have our free sample sizes. All these kind of things. So I hope that kind of helps you understand a little bit about the diffusion of innovation and the diffusion of new product innovation throughout the market. If you have other questions, if you have any questions about it, please leave a comment below. If you want to learn more about marketing or branding or other things, please check us out at our website at www.waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter and Facebook, and we hope you like and subscribe to our videos. Bye from the University of Illinois. The late adopters, the blah, 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 the blah, 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 blah.